Hello, everybody. This is um, Bridget, the amateur podcaster. <laughs> I'm really fucking tired. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I just, I really want to welcome you all. This is the beta version of the podcast. I haven't done this before on my own, and I just want to thank Paul Atkinson at Polly's World for setting this up. Um, very kind of him to do so because I know nothing about lighting or technology. Um, I know we have some really, really awesome people in. We're going to come in on the chat and hopefully on the show too. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit uh, to tell you why I started this podcast and uh, to see what you might like to talk about today. So I started this podcast because um, I'm grumpy. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm really grumpy. I was, I've been very fortunate to be on a couple of other podcasts, but I was just like, you know what? There's too many rules and I have to be in invited to come on to the show and i'm just like and follow your rules and they were dudes i'm not gonna lie yeah i'm just like and then they would talk over me a little bit good dudes good dudes but talking over me and so i was just like you know what i'm gonna start my own podcast and you know who was the first in line to say i should do it, it was cassie lake so thank you cassie and uh i did an international women's day podcast um so this is not part of um anything that Paul or Douglas is affiliated with. It's, this is my own thing now. So I'm Mademoiselle Fox, uh, and I'm really pleased to meet you. And um, so I had a, a really, really fun group of conversations on International Women's Day when they let me take it over um, at the True North Eager Beaver. And um, Jen Waddell came on, and uh, Cassie came on, and Linda M came on, and... Uh, also very active in the chat is uh, a beautiful woman named Vim, uh, who is a teacher. So I'm super proud of uh, all of those incredible women. I know my parents have tuned in today. Um, it's my, my mom is Mary Charlotte and my dad is Angelo Paul, which is cute because, you know, my partner's name is Paul too. And they're just like, what are you doing now? You're always doing stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, now I'm starting a podcast. So I really hope you tune in. So thank you for tuning in and, and uh, happy Easter because I know my parents celebrate that. Um, I, I, what I like about Easter is that I get to spend time with my children and have a nice meal and eat a lot of chocolate. So I'm not like a hugely religious person. I am, I'm not really, but my grandmother, I'll tell you, I mean, not that you asked, but my grandmother's uh, Angela Frances Beatty Legary, and she was a card carrying Catholic platinum level person. And, but she was so generous. Uh, she was a nurse in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and the 80s. Like she was really uh, amazing. She was a single mom and uh, uh, of my mother. And uh, she was a very, a very stern nurse by day. Like you, during the, like if you were in her, her bed, like if you were in her room, she was just like, yeah, that's enough. A lot of people have it harder than you, so you suck it up. I don't know, she'd say something like that. But then by night, she was so much fun. She loved music. She loved to dance. She loved to have a glass of wine. And, uh, you know, she was just amazing. So. Uh, I would just want to give a little shout out to Angela Francis Legary Beatty and her sister, who she lived with for a really long time, who's Audrey Mary Gertrude uh, Beatty, and she worked at a bank because those are like the two options that were available, like one of the few options that were available to women other than like taking care of the home front, which is also hugely respectable. But um, so my my auntie. Uh, Audrey Mary Gertrude was a was a bank teller because you could you could work at a bank, you could be a nurse, you could be a teacher, you could be a stay at home mom. I think, I mean, that's sort of that's where I grew up. I mean, there's I'm sure there were other options like in the Arctic, you could be like hunting and gathering and, and uh, stuff like that. But that's anyway, that's my context because I'm from the Ottawa Valley. And for the love of 
something. I hope somebody jumps in to talk because I'm sure people don't want to hear me talk for too much longer. <laughs> um, but I'll I'll tell you why I started this podcast. Um, I'm going to be very straight up, raw, and honest. Was that uh, <clears throat> I've been fortunate to learn about podcasting from some people who are near and dear to me, and um, I just found like I was uh, waiting in the green room a lot to be invited in and not being uh, allowed. I, I was not always allowed to use my own voice and like to, I was being scolded for following rules like about like, oh, don't look at the chat. Don't talk about the chat and your lighting is not that great. And like, you know what? I don't really care about the rules very much and uh, I'd rather just like create another space for uh, women and anyone who's feminist or humanist I know identified all genders to have another space and there are lots of spaces out there so that's good but this is like this is another space and I hope that uh, people will jump in and contribute whatever they want to tribute uh, either in the chat or the um or come on screen. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking. So, um, Paul, I know you're listening in the background, but I'd love to, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about Joanna. Joanna Unlearn No Rules. Um, I'm not remembering her name properly, but she's pretty, pretty badass. Do you, would you mind coming in and talking about her? might be having a nap. So uh, I guess it's on me. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Honestly. Learn 16 is would would you mind? I don't want to hear me talk anymore. Are they? I can't see the chat at all. Oh Toronto Dan. Oh my goodness. Toronto? T dot Dan. Okay, thanks. I couldn't see the chat, so I'm just like, I'm just talking in dead air. Like this is really boring. Um, <laughs> yes, Ellen. Yes. What authors would you like to talk about? I love Toni Morrison myself. Uh, who do you like? Well, take your take your time, but uh, Toni Morrison is amazing. Um, and uh, Paul's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Toronto Dan. Honestly, I'd love to know who you're reading because, um, like, to me, you're you're uh, you're in the fight, and uh, I think you're just awesome. And whoever you're reading, I'd love to know about. Um, there's an author in Toronto. I'm going to try and remember his name, but he's amazing too. Uh, well, of it. I know people have different feelings about Margaret Atwood, but um, I like a lot of what she's written. Um, and Ellen, I, I hope that you'll know this, but the, the person who wrote um, uh, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, I can't remember the name, but uh, she's amazing. She's a British author. Um, Shoot, I'd look it up if I had my phone with me. But anyway, Orange is Not the Only Fruit is an amazing book. It's a very slim book. Um, I think you'd really like it. Oh, I'd love to know. Oh, thank you, Ellen. Thank you very much. Look at me. I'm looking at the chat. I, even though that's not a podcast rule, I don't care. <laughs> um, and... Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I don't know. I don't know. It's a. I don't know. It's a good movie. It's super weird, like nightmares for days. But um, that's really funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, Unlearned Sixteen is supposed to be excellent as well. And uh, I don't know. I listened to. I mean, I I used to pretend that I didn't only listen to CBC. But like that's pretty much all I do. Like I work and I listen to CBC, and and then my you know I 
say to Paul, I tried to pretend that it's like, oh, I didn't learn this from CBC. I was like, I was listening to a podcast. <laughs> and I'm like, I, well, I call it the truth channel, to be honest. I'm like, well, everything on CBC is real, obviously, like, clearly. And he's like, mm, I don't know. I'm like, mm, yeah, it is. And I have a dear friend who is a, a reporter for CBC. And he's just like the kindest human being ever. I'll have to tell, I have to tell you this little story about him. He's like, he lives on my street. And I won't say his name. But um, uh, a bunch of neighbors got together and were like, okay, you know, this is when we had snow. Uh, we should collaborate and like, would you, would anyone like to collaborate and get uh, a snow blower and we could share it and I'll put it in my shed and we'll like figure out the costs and the gas and blah, 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 blah. And so I have a shared driveway. And so I, I talked to my neighbors and they're like super athletic, like skiing, cross country, biking, all this stuff. And they do definitely more of the shoveling than I do. Like I try to haul my butt out there and, and, and contribute, but uh, they do the most of it. And they're like, we don't care. We love exercise. I'm like, I love you so much. And so I was like, well, okay. So six of the neighbors are going in on this snowblower thing. Should we do it? And they're like, actually, we don't, we don't really want to do it. And I'm like, that's fine. But the neighbor who was organizing it, hello, Elaine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the um the neighbor who was organizing the snowblower was like, um, he he messaged me personally and he's like, you know, I, I recognize that you're in a single income home. And so I would, you know, why don't we cut the cost in half to 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 represent that? I'm just like, only a good person would do that, you know? And I was like, oh, thank you so much, G. Like, that's so sweet. I said, well, we've decided, my neighbors and I have decided not to go in on it because, you know, they do all the shoveling. <laughs> but even though we didn't go in on the project, um, the snowblower comes out because he gets up early to do CBC really early. And, like, the end of the driveway is, like, plowed. So, like, this is awesome. I'm like, oh, thanks so much, G, you know, because that's, like, not, the, you know, it's really shitty shoveling when the snowplow goes by and you have to like, you're like, it's minus 40 and I'm shoveling wet snow that's going to freeze in an hour, you know? Oh my goodness. Potty mouth Pollyanna. That's it. Mate. Welcome to the conversation. That's awesome. You're so welcome. Um, I was just going to tell you, I got this, I got a couple of amazing messages this morning via through Paul. Um, one of them was um, from Sunita. She lives in Ottawa and uh, she just was like so encouraging. And she's like, I watched the whole thing uh, on Friday night and and didn't like some of what happened. And I'm so excited that you're going to start your podcast. And then she shared some very personal things with me. And uh, I was just like, I felt so encouraged because, I, to be honest, like I get, I I am very sensitive to criticism. So if people like say shit about me online, like I'm like, oh, like, oh I don't want to do this anymore. So I, I might seem like I know what I'm doing, but I really don't. And um, I am actually fairly shy, but I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. Life is short and let's put ourselves out there. Like... Like Toronto Dan does, like Ellen does, like Elaine does, like Cassie does. Um, yeah, does anyone have a, I'm, I'm watching the chat. If anyone has a topic, I'd love to, to take that up. I don't, I don't want it to be all me, just blah, 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 blah. But there is a fox in the hen house, so... Actually, I don't even know. I I only know that expression from farming. Like, there's a fox in the hen house. It's like when a fox goes in and like eats all the chickens. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine. You know what? It's it was all Paul. It's his photo, and he put it up. Um, chin up, feet forward. Thank you, Dan. Um, honestly, I need a topic. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about recipes. Or I'm going to talk about basketball. 
No. I'm going to talk about basketball. So it's March Madness, so I can barely leave the house right now because um, uh, I'm watching all the games. Well, not all of them, but enough of them. And honestly, like, I don't really care who wins. Like, I just love basketball. I'm going to go balling tomorrow. And I'm hoping to to go to basketball. Sorry. I'm going to hope, I hope to play basketball tomorrow and I hope to go to boxing in the next couple of days. But um, what I would say is that I, what I love so much about basketball is the respect that you get on the court. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, how good or bad you are. And um, today I had a really nice interaction with um, Fox's e eggs. <laughs> Okay, Elaine, I need recipe. I need a recipe for tomorrow. I've got nothing planned. I'm like, I've got food in the fridge, but I don't know what to make. So any ideas, put them out there. I'm like, the easier the better. Um, but anyway, so it's like, anyway, I, uh, one of my kids works at Home Hardware, which is right near my house. And this, this does relate to basketball. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I went down this morning and, and I'm, made her breakfast before she went to work and whatever and I love the crew at home hardware on Wellington Street in Ottawa and I went in because sometimes you can like I uh um summer tova yes awesome um so I went in and I was just like because you can sometimes you can hire people that who are working there if they've got like an extra like 20 minutes or half an hour like to help you with stuff so I um my friend Ozzy was working so he's a seven foot tall 20 ish dude who's a, who's a person of color and and which is I, I'm just telling you this because it was like it, it, it was so funny we get along like a house on fire and he also like he looks out for my daughter who works there like he takes care of all the all the young people who work there he's super sweet and so I'm like like could Oz help me out and the, and the manager was like yeah yeah come back at 10 well you know he can go help you so I'm like okay well Oz I need to I would like to move this piece of furniture that someone's giving away for free and he's like yeah let's do this come on let's go so it's me and Oz walking down the street and I'm like five foot one and he is seven feet tall <laughs> and there's this huge armoire that I moved that was given away for free beautiful shape you know like and it's like i'm like oh yeah what do we do like what are we gonna do and uh i'm like how do we do this and he's like well we're gonna go really slowly i'm like okay i'm like well my house is half a block away like i've moved stuff before on a skateboard i have a long board i'm like should i go get the long board and we'll, we'll like He's like, yeah, go do that. So I'm like, well, let's go get the longboard. So then we put this huge armoire on a longboard and wheeled it down my street. And he's like, I'm like, obviously, it looks like this is this is pretty hilarious. So I took a picture and I'm like, I won't post it or anything. I'm like, I was like, in what world does this make sense? And I'm like, okay, now we're gonna hump it up the stairs. He's like, okay, we're gonna hump it up the stairs and put it in your in your in your uh, living room. I'm just like, this is so awesome. And I was like, I I want to as a shout out to Ozzy. I don't know if you're watching Oz, but I was like, okay, I, I'm obviously I'm gonna pay you for your time. And I tried to give him some cash, and he's just like, no, like I'm like you're a terrible terrible business person you're never going to make money doing this and anyway he's in university for international development uh there's not a kinder soul i think probably in the world and so i'm like i'm gonna get you back i'm gonna uh. but he like he just like as soon as i said like you know i'd like to can i give you this like and he's just like no i'm like you just spent an 45 minutes of your time to help me lift this more into my house and you don't want anything for it He's like, no i'm good i'm like okay well here's some easter chocolate and he's like okay thank you um i really hope oh what proteins are on hand Elaine? um i have some chicken in the freezer and i have some i have to actually have some really good fish like from 
from the Gaspésie region, like redfish. It's just in my freezer. So maybe you have an idea for that because, you know, like a fish stew or something like that. I've got potatoes, I've got onions, like something super simple like that would be awesome. Oh my gosh, Saucy. I need you. I need your backup. I need you to get on this so I don't have to talk anymore. If you wish. Well, in, in the meantime, I'll just tell you a Lola story. So Paul and I were walking, uh, for, for those who are new to the story. Um, oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. That's good. Thanks, Sassy. Um, so we took the dog out this morning at like uh, six o'clock. Because who doesn't want to go outside at six o'clock at minus seven? Um, and... Uh, they're laying their bone in, breast out. Oh, whatever that means. Um, so, oh, sauce, I would love that so much. Okay, because no one can sauce like you except for Linda. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, so we took, um, we took Lola the dog out this morning, and there's like nobody in the dog park, and... Uh, Took her out for a nice long walk today on the Ottawa Canal, and um, and like she she's very scary looking. Like I'm not gonna lie, like she's got a one of those collars on. That, like I'm like here, let's put your special necklace on. It's like like it's a it's a it's a spiky collar. I can't remember what they're called, but I mean, it, and I I totally appreciate if anyone is not is not on board with that. Like, I really understand that. I've never thought I would put that on a, on a dog, but the, uh, the pokes are, um, they've been shaved down so that they don't hurt her and we wear it really loose, but it's really made a huge difference because I'm trying to be able to walk her again. Oh, oh yay. Um, and, um, um, yeah, so we took her out for a walk and she saw, should we i'm like let's take her for a really long walk just to tire her out so we took her down by the ottawa canal and every time she sees a tree or a squirrel she just starts like this like she just doesn't even like from standing she goes she jumps up like five feet and you know just to try to get up she because she's trained to um hunt pumas which and i don't think there are any in ottawa there are some cougars though I've heard um but yeah so like she'll jump like five feet in the air and like that's not even as high as she can go and people look at her and, and she's got a halter on and I'm just like oh my god and she's skinny because she's been in shelter and we're feeding her a lot thank you Mohan um yeah like I I we really thought about it and talked about it but I'm just like now I'm walking this dog with spiky collar and who jumps like five feet in the air and I can't even walk her like Paul has to do all the walking, but I'm there and I'm just trying to be bossy because I'm, I'm not that bad at being bossy. Um, and then like, okay, probably we look like we're starving this dog, which we're not, obviously, like we're feeding her very, very well. We're training her as best we can with good advice. And she's got this collar on and I'm just like, I look like the whitest trash ever. <laughs> like, like, or sorry if that's inappropriate <laughs> yeah i agree satsi like yeah you're right like and, and so we're doing everything we can to to keep um other people safe and sometimes paul gets like he's like why are you you're, you're being like he's like i've got her i've got her i'm like i know you have her under control but i'm like she's scaring other people so i am gonna go in front of her and I stand in her peripheral vision and I put my hand in front of her. And as soon as I do that, and I'm like, no. And she's just, she's just like, okay, 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 okay. I won't. So I don't know. I just, I don't want to scare other people or other dogs. So it's a, it's a bit of an adventure. Um, yeah. So everyone's on. That's fun. Um, okay, well, until someone can join in, somebody does, um, 
Well, I was going to speak, I wanted to start really gently with our conversation and something calm and friendly. Um, but I also just want to say, you know, I listen to the news a lot. And um, so, you know, uh, I just wanted to speak a little bit about Ukraine and Gaza because, well, first of all, who doesn't care about those issues? And I'm not going to say I know everything. Uh, obviously, I don't. Um, but I, I am living with, when I'm with Paul, quite close to the Ukrainian embassy. And I see people lining up to get their paperwork done there. And there's a huge flag that says stand with Ukraine. And all I can say is, absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, they're arming anyone they can and with weapons, including mums who leave their kids at home to go out and fight in the streets with with Russians who are conscripts who don't want to be there, you know? Like, it's it's heartbreaking. This is my last political thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to go back to fun. But, and then in Gaza, uh, you know, like when I me made some food today, I was just like, how fortunate am I that I can make this food for my children and my partner and just in a warm, cozy house. And, uh, you know, the women of, the women of Gaza and parents, like aunties, uncles, everybody, like they've, they've gone through uh, ex dog food, expired dog food, and now they're digging through uh, garbage dumps for food. And so it's not almost a famine, it is a famine. So this, and whether you celebrate this weekend, I don't know how you celebrate it, but I'm just like every piece of food that I make, everything I don't throw out, I'm like, I think about the people in Gaza who are just striving to, and Ukraine, who are just striving to feed themselves and their families. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking about this weekend. And Clementine Ford, Ellen, thank you. I will definitely check that out. And Zon Vilness, awesome. That's great. It's good. It's always nice to get reading recommend. Um, so um, I, sorry, I was going to talk about basketball, but um, uh, you know, I was, I I do really really love basketball, and I was watching the the uh, March Madness, which is all very focused on the men's team, and and they're so awesome. Like they're just like incredible athletes, and I just love to watch it. And I honestly don't really care who wins. I just like to watch it. And then I see like the women's NBA and uh, it's like, okay, so the NBA is just called the NBA and it's all dudes. So the branding is off and then it's the WNBA, which is women. So like, oh, we have to say that they're women. I'm like, but they are so good. Like, honestly, like the dunking skills, like the, and they're just like, there's no drama. I, I find it's just like, we're here to ball. Let's ball. We're not getting paid half as much as the men are. <laughs> we're here because we love the sport and we're supporting ourselves through university or whatever like that. But uh, I love WNBA and I'm so excited that there's so much good women's basketball in Ottawa. Um, I have played with a couple of women at the local courts and uh, they're just like so, and, and men too. and other folks but uh it's just like you know i played with this woman who played for the carlton um the carlton team university of carlton and i was just playing at my local court and she showed up and she's like i don't know six foot two and like 22 and like super athletic and and, and uh she's like do you want to play and i'm like not really <laughs> against you and she's like come on let's just do this let's just have fun and I'm like okay all right so she gave me some amazing pointers um which is like that uh part of it is is how you throw the ball like that but a lot of it comes from your lower body and uh I was just like oh okay that's good because my upper body's not that not as strong uh, as my lower body and she's just like no no it's all in your legs like you got this I'm like oh thank you so much that was so sweet and anyway I hope to see her again on the court because she was just a total sweetheart 
Um, yes, Elaine Paul is allergic to fish, and uh, that's probably our. That's probably the reason I'm going to break up with him because I'm like, I love seafood. I'm kidding. I'm not going to break up with him, but yeah, I love. Like I love. I love fish. I love oysters. I love mussels, and uh, so. Anyway, I can do that on my own. I can eat fish on my own. And and if he ate fish, he would basically die. So we don't want to do that. And <laughs> fish does. <test>. Paul. <laughs> and Mohan, I just knew that you would love women's sports. Like it's like it's a different space, I think, sometimes, right? Like it's um you know, especially sports that are non-traditional for women. It's just like, um, you know, it's just like, there's not a lot of ego there. Like, I remember the when I started playing ball hockey, um, that was the first physical team sport that I played. And I was just like, um, my, my shot is terrible. Like, I... <laughs> and, you know, I, we would play at this, like, abandoned airport hangar i don't even know where it is like paul will remember but um anyway and it was like hilarious so our our goalie was called stinky Lindsay because she was she was an awesome goalie but she never washed her gear and then uh we would, anyway she was awesome we were grateful to have her but um and then i would go in and i'd be like Actually, I really like grinding it out in the corners. Like, it's actually pretty fun. I'm like, because I'm definitely not going to score goals, but I'm good on D. So, um, you know, you do like, and I got some great coaching. It was just like, yeah, use your butt. Like, you know, you grind them out in the corner. You don't hurt anybody. You you never intend to hurt anybody. And I'm like, I'm going to use my badonkadong to grind you into the corner and pass the ball to someone who can do something with it. And it was so much fun. Oh, Toronto. I'll try to get her back, Toronto, again. Ah. Yeah, I agree, Mohan. I think it's a lot cleaner. Like, it's just like, I don't, you know, like, I'm not, well, I'm not here to hurt somebody. I just want to win the game, you know? Oh, Ellen Bell Hooks is really, really awesome to you. I totally agree. Yeah. I I don't know where Lola went. She's just like, oh, hello. 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 You're a little bit silly. Um. What, what I find really funny is, like, I mean, she's, like, she's trying so hard to be a good girl. Like, she doesn't want to, like, do anything that, you know, uh, makes her feel in jeopardy or, like, she's going to be returned to shelter, which she never, ever will be. But um, so one of the things she does is she loves to jump up on Paul and give him big hugs. And so we're trying to control that. But with me, I'm, like, you can't, you cannot jump on me. I'm, like, um you're 80 pounds and I'm 120 pounds. I'm like, if you jump on me or anybody my size, you're going to like really hurt them. So as much as I can, I can handle it, but um, like, it's just not appropriate behavior. So um, I shut it down. So it's been really, it's been very interesting. It's, it's kind of challenging. I have to say, and I know many of you in the, in the chat have, uh, uh, animal companions but it's just like being so strict sometimes feels very uh, uncomfortable to me um but i understand that you know in the right way that uh, ultimately it's better for them to know who's in charge like st strict but firm and gentle i think i don't know i know cassie would have a lot to say about that uh, as someone who's dragged by a horse have you all heard about Cassie being dragged by a horse? Oh, cool. I'm just reading what Saucy said about uh, about Dune. But, you know, when I told my, my wee story about, you know, I Lola has uh, it's knocked me about a bit, and she's knocked Paul about a bit. But, um, and Cassie, 
like, well, I got dragged by a horse. And I'm like, that's a little more, that's a little bit bigger than a Lola. <laughs> two, two dogs, one cat, a bearded dragon, and three barrel children. <laughs> that's a lot, girl. <laughs> and oh my goodness, I just, oh, we have to talk about dogs now. Dags. John O'Dan, my dog weighs less than one of my sneakers. I was like, well, that's, do you have a, do you have a dog purse? Do you have like a little Dan's dog purse? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I've seen these things where you can put like a small dog or a cat in a backpack that has like a, a bubble out the back so that they can look out. I'm just like, oh, Chihuahua. Yeah, well, you could get one of those dog backpacks. I think that would really, uh, it would really up your status if you took your dog to meetings, to city meetings in a backpack. <laughs> Ellen, what the fuck? You've been dragged by a horse and saucy? You have a man child? Well, we all knew that. Like, seriously. Um, in your pocket okay that's a very small dog um but ellen i really want to hear that story when you want to share it but like horses are friggin a pony had a, saucy had a pony sorry i i just froze i think but what was the, I would love to know the pony's name. Like, you, I'm like mad for horses, so I'd love to know. But, I mean, like to be kicked off a pony or dragged by a pony or a horse. Like, I'm, I love horses and ponies and donkeys, but like, you do not, you know, like, it, they're, they're serious business. Like, if you step behind them, well, you you, there's a good chance he'll get kicked in the face or, or there is a chance sorry i should say and uh um they're just you know they're beautiful creatures and they really read your emotions um so i've been i've ridden some horses and uh been to a donkey sanctuary and they're just like they're just beautiful creatures and i really actually like honestly my my and now that I basically have a, a pony, which is a, a huge dog, but if I could have a, an actual horse or just, I don't need to own a horse. Obviously I live in an urban setting, but when I've ridden horses before, um, I, uh, I, I just, I don't know. They're just incredible. Like when you approach calmly and confidently and you ask their permission before you mount and they're well-trained, like there's, it's just incredible. And then, you know, there's that whole thing about, Ellen, you'll know this more than I do, but like about when you, um, because you can really, you can get sore in your parts if you don't ride them properly. And they don't, the horses don't like it either, right? So like the whole standing up while you, I, I can do a trot. I don't like a gallop. Like I'm not, I'm not that skilled. Uh, but one of my best friends has a daughter who's like this big and she's an incredible horse rider. Um, she's very, very well coached and the horses are very well trained. But when I saw little wee Evelyn, oh yeah, posting trot, I can do that. But like, honestly, anything beyond that, I'm just like, I'm like, please don't go faster. Don't jump over a fence. Um when the, anyway, when I saw my little sweet, my sweet Evelyn ride a horse uh, at, you know, like five years old, riding like a, a, a huge stallion and her mom sent me a video of it and uh, like she was at full gallop, like full gallop and Evelyn was completely in charge. It was just like incredible. I was like, that girl is fierce. That's a fierce girl, like her mama. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm desperately hoping somebody will join because um, I'm 
running out of material. Uh, to be honest, TBH. But, um, hmm, well, I could try out like a little bit of You're right, Ellen. Like, this girl has no fear of, like, she's not afraid of anything. She actually, um, thank you for reminding me because she really loves animals. She has a dog. She has a cat. Oh, Paul's on. Oh, thank goodness. What would you like to tell us, Mr. P? I thought I'd take over the Lola cam for a couple minutes just to say hello. Oh, please do. <laughs> but it's not my show. It's your show. I'm just, I'm just here to, you know, show Lola sometimes, uh, put her on because she's such a cute, adorable little dogo. And, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd pop in for a minute or two, give you a, a little bit of a breather. Cause you've been going nonstop for 43 minutes, which is a lot considering you're not, this is not something you do daily. Right. So, you know, trying to give you a little bit of a little bit of a rest. Thank you. While, you. while you recollect your thoughts and decide on what you want to speak on for your next topic. That I did put a link in the chat for anybody who wants to join. Feel free. You can jump on in, join the show. I mean, this is a, this is the, the, we would, we could call this a soft opening, I think. Eh? Yeah. Soft it's it's the beta, it's the beta version of the Bridget. Yeah. I mean, we're, it's on my channel uh, because we weren't able to get yeah. your set up in time. We'll have to set up some other stuff so we can. I actually wrote music and created an, a, a, an an intro, and I have some music to go with it, along with some visuals. But it just we weren't able to make it happen this evening, considering we talked about this at like 4 p.m. Um, well, it was more than f we talked about. It. I mean, you were talking about what you wanted to do this for a little while, and at 4 p.m., I'm like, well, why don't we do it tonight? Yeah, like, there's, and there's talk. There's people who, who've been chatting who wanted take part and take place. So why don't we do something this evening? We'll just throw something together quickly. I can put it on my channel tonight and we can start up your own YouTube station uh, tomorrow. Yeah, no, it was super sweet. And uh, would you mind telling them about when Lola sees squirrels? <laughs> oh, you mean when, when um, we're out for the walk today and she jumped so high, she almost hit her head on a tree branch trying to get to two squirrels. It's, I mean, this doggo goes bananas for squirrels. She's really, she's pretty good around other dogs. As I slowly introduce her, she gets, you know, she's still a little skittish. She wasn't in a shelter for four months, but I can take her up to another dog and they could sniff and, and her tail's wagging the whole time. She never is in a defensive state. Uh, she's never angry, but we need to keep the prong collar on her for now so I can pull her back if need be. That being said, with the prong collar on when she sees a squirrel, nope. If I don't have a good hold on her, she's going to pull me off my feet. She wants the squirrel, and she's going to get it. And I think the same thing for cobra chickens. <laughs> I didn't have the prong collar when she chased pro cobra chickens to the point where one of them was so afraid it shit as it flew away. Now, I know they do that, but this one was scared shitless, literally. And then she chased them. We went down the road right to the, ri the river's edge, <clears throat> and she was going bananas. And I was holding her back. She actually went in the water. It's March. That water's liquid ice right now. So I, I pulled her back because she would have went right in after the cobra chickens. I've never seen Canada geese flee from a beast before <laughs> of any type. Now. And she wasn't even barking or anything. She just looked at well, them. She's like, I'm going to eat your face. Yes, but uh, one of my buddies said it's because the geese, they're, they're home sooner than normal. They've returned sooner than normal, number one mm -hmm. and number two. They haven't nested yet. So if they if they've nested, they may have responded. But that being said, I've never seen Canada geese run away from anything ever in my life. So Ms. Lola is a cobra chicken hunter, along with a puma yeah. hunter and a wild boar hunter. And honestly, I'm oh, there's a few things in the chat I want to respond to. You. Like where we went for our big walk for the other day was where like you know i'm desperately afraid of snakes like irrationally afraid i know they're not poisonous like uh, but i'm like as soon as i see one i'm like uh. but i'm like if i was with lola and i was out for a trail run and there's a snake i'm like i would just be like all she would have to do is look at it i don't want to kill a snake but like if she was just like like mommy doesn't like snakes she'd be like rawr, rawr, rawr. 
you know. It would be a toy to her. She would think it's a toy. Not oh, oh totally. Living, living, living thing. It's just a toy. It's there was a toys to her. That's it. Two toys. There was one time I was on, I went on a trail run by myself in the Gatnos and uh, I saw this like, sorry, this is gross, but like this bloody thing on the trail and I was just like, oh my God, it's a snake. And I was like, what happened? No, I was just like, oh, it's dead. And I'm just like, oh, this is disgusting. And I was like, oh, I guess like a, a bird got it or something. And, and But I realized it was a mountain biker had driven over it. And I was just like, yeah. and you know, like bear season has come early here. So I'm like, if I can, when we can get uh, Lola to uh, to run with me, that'll be great because you know uh, that'll be protection. But I just wanted to say, like, I wanted to answer um, Ellen your question about solo travel for women. I have a really great recommendation. I think in Toronto, Dan. Um, oh, Paul, don't go. Um, I was I was considering a, a Tuesday or a Thursday around six o'clock because um, you know Paul's home from work and I could you know because I right now I would rely on him for the tech and uh, I think that would work for his schedule because he's got his Monday podcast. Uh, I'd you know. Monday evening, Monday morning to Friday morning. And so anyway, so I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, um, thank you for asking. And then uh, what I was going to say was uh, um, about solo travel. And this is, I, I love telling Paul these stories when he's like, how are you still alive? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. So I haven't even told you all of the stuff I've done. But. Um, um, yeah, so, well, you've heard about when I was in Costa Rica and I walked through the estuary with a backpack on my head at full tide. It's not quite the same one. I'm on my phone because I can't fully hear everything you're saying. Uh, okay, I don't have a and I'm sorry. I know I'm repeating a story that maybe some of you Fair. So when I was there. Sure everything looks good, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump. Um, but, uh, all right, you, you, you know, take as much time as you want. The, the channel is yours this evening, my darling. Okay. You can do I'll do you like want. 20 more minutes to see if anyone joins. But, um, yeah, so some of you know this story already, but I went to uh, Costa Rica to work at a, uh, a feminist organization, um, when I was like 19 and I knew nothing. Uh, I didn't speak Spanish, and uh, there I thought there was a volunteer program. I just called them uh, Casa Jamanja. From uh, I found out about them from a feminist magazine that was made out of the Yukon, and um, I uh, I just I called them and I was like, "Oh, you you have a volunteer program?" And they're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Oh, that's that's like, that's awesome. Can I come and volunteer?" And they're like. You can come. So, uh, long story short, I'm like, I'm like, do I put in an application? And they're like, no, just tell us when your flight arrives. And I'm like, okay. And so the backstory is because I've told the story before, but my poor parents dropped me off at the airport, and they're like, you don't speak Spanish, and the internet, you have to walk to a university to use internet, and you know, they're like, and they said when we. Bridget, when we dropped you off and put you on that plane and we left, we cried our eyes out. We were so scared for you. I was like, yeah, I understand that. Like, as a mother now, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I'm like, but it was the best thing ever. Uh, Toronto, Dan? Oh. That's all. Um, that's, that's wild. And, uh, yeah, no, I have... Uh, that's that. So Toronto Dan was just saying he hasn't been on a plane before, and you know what? Like, it's it's not fun and relaxing anymore. The first time I was on a plane by myself. Okay, here's a solo travel story. Um, I lived in Brandon, Manitoba, where my biological father um, had taken me, uh, which is when 
it, it wasn't great circumstances, but he put me on a, a plane. Sorry, I'll I'll just tell you. Like he he just he took me away from my mom and he put me on a plane. He took me to Manitoba. And uh anyway, then at a certain point he was like, Okay, uh, I'm gonna get you a tri- a plane ticket to go see your grandmother, my grandmother Eleanor. So uh one of my kids, her middle names is Eleanor. She was just so lovely. She lived in Ottawa. So I got put on the plane at like 13 and I sat beside a businessman with a suitcase and nothing bad happened, but he opened it and I was just like, you know, we're sitting beside each other and uh, and I was like, well, he had a banana in there and some papers and I'm just like, um, what do businessmen do? And he's like, well, we do business. I'm like, why do you have a banana in your suitcase? He's like, well, sometimes I get hungry. And I'm like, mm, okay, makes sense. <laughs> well, funny. And I was like, I was flying by myself. I was treated so well. They're like, do you want to do some crafts? The, the flight attendants. And I'm like, yep, yeah, I like crafts. That'd be great. And then so then I arrived in Ottawa and my grandmother picked me up and she just spoiled me rotten, like just like, oh, it was awesome. I was just like, wow, this is the big city. I'm in the big city with my grandma and we're going to eat hot dogs and drink Cokes and go to museums. It was just like, the, it was the best trip ever. And I, I have a sister. Uh, I have a half sister, but she's my sister. Who's just like, yeah, Grandma Eleanor really spoiled you. I'm like, yeah, you're right. She did. And I'm like, and I loved it. <laughs> And when she would come to visit us, like I was in Manitoba, I was in rural Brandon, and she would come to visit and she would sleep on a pullout couch. And like, I would just like get in there and cuddle with her. We'd watch The Young and the Restless, <laughs> The Young and the Restless at four o'clock and eat like whatever, you know, junk food. I was just like, I loved, loved, loved that woman. She was incredible. Grandmas and aunties are so awesome. Oh, what is Paul's answer? Oh, I don't know. It's about software. Sounds hard. It's fine. So I think uh, I will, um, I'll wrap up in the next five or 10 minutes, unless anyone wants to join in. Um, yes, I know it's not part of, uh, Paul has let me h- hack his, uh, his account. Oh, Elaine, that's okay. Uh, no worries. Um, but uh, I would just want to thank you all for your support and your encouragement. And um, the next time I, I, that we do this. Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Everything stops right now. Miss. <laughs> take How? over, Please. Oh, gosh, the light is so weird in here. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> Hi, I was upstairs listening to you and I was like, um, well, I don't feel like doing a full face of makeup, but I felt like doing a little something so I could come on the show because my face was not so wonderful before. <laughs> don't stop it. You just show up as you are. You're beautiful. Thank you. But I wanted to show off my wild hair. So I want to show you that you're not the only one with some crazy wild 80s hair going on <laughs> what do you what do you got what do you want to talk about i'm just i don't know i just, just want to listen I to you to come keep you company it's saturday night i felt so bad that you're just sitting here talking away like you're talking my, my mom used to say like you're talking to the wall <laughs> when she's talking to me <laughs> I'm a little nervous. This is uh, unusual for me. I don't like video. Okay, I totally respect that. And to be honest, I don't really either. And I just want to say you look gorgeous. And oh. thank you for being so brave and, and jumping on. And I just no like, problem. what do you want to say about your day or your weekend plans or whatever you want to talk about? Oh, well, I mean, weekend plans. I'm just waiting for the little guy to go to sleep so that we can start packaging all the little plastic eggs and hide them around the house for him mm-hmm. and for the Easter Bunny because he's a full believer. Um, we don't really do much other Easter celebrations. We're not very religious. 
or anything like that. We just like to eat some good food and enjoy our time together. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Like I was saying earlier, like uh, I just, uh, um, I just like to cook for my kids and eat chocolate. And I'm not like an Easter person. Like I don't know if like trying to explain Easter to kids, I'm like, um, well, I guess <laughs> I, it's pretty weird. Like Jesus died and then he was on a cross and he was in a cave and then he came back and then there was a I don't know a feast I'm like I don't know it's really weird let's just eat chocolate (laughs) (laughs) well it's so funny because Mateo watches all these YouTube videos um and he's come across a lot of like uh religious videos so he'll come downstairs out of nowhere he'll be like did you know that Jesus died on the cross and we're like Like, yes we did and he's like oh well he came back and he has all these like little facts about Jesus. It's funny. Well, I, I mean, I know he wore a nice white dress. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in the stable. Like, <laughs> People like, treated him bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not making fun of people who believe, but I'm just like, I can't. My kids are like, can you explain this to me? I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> I'm like, how about we just go with the Easter Bunny? <laughs> yeah, or I can bring you to church and they'll explain. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Like, and you know, I'm someone who can hide her own Easter eggs. Like, I'll be like, I don't know where they went. Uh, oh, know. that happens every year. We find at least three or four of them kicking around mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. June. Oh, Mo is here too. Do you want to oh, say hi? Absolutely, I would love it. Mo, would you like? I would love it if you had some stuff to say. Oh, hey, let's talk. Like, <laughs> I just want you guys to talk about like let's talk about the women's sports, man. That stuff's awesome. What do you? Yeah, what do you got, man? It's hockey. Like that. That really got me into women's sports because mm-hmm. like I um it was like the Team Canada playing and it was on and I was like. Man, I, I really, I was watching the games. I was like, man, I really enjoy, I didn't even know it was the women's at first. I'm like, man, this is good. Like, what? These guys, these guys are really good. Holy cow. They're fast. They're, they're clean. They're, they're efficient with their stuff. And I'm like, and then it's like the women. I'm like, wow, I enjoy this more. And I tell yeah. this to the guys that work all the time. I'm like, guys, I really enjoy watching women's hockey more than I watch yeah. enjoy watching men's hockey. Because uh, women's hockey, I find is more about the hockey. Yeah, there's like, don't you find there's like, as I mentioned before, there's like no ego there. Like, well, I mean, there probably is, but. Well, yeah, everybody's got their, 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 not, their stuff, you know. They don't want to be aggressive. I mean, they are aggressive. Like, that's when I stopped playing hockey was when I was playing with younger women. And I'm like, they're faster than me. They're smarter than me. And I'm going to get hurt. And even though they're super nice, I'm just like, I'm too old. I can't. If I can't, if I'm injured i can't work i can't make money but yeah, what do you I, think i retired from competitive sports um but it was like okay you know what um i gotta go to work tomorrow <laughs> <You know? laughs> i can't handle this like i'm a hurting unit i'm like i tell the guys i'm like listen man after this yeah. season i'm done i'm like I'm, do- I'm done guys like i got work you know uh, if i'm not getting paid for the sports i go i can't i'm very competitive so like i compete so, so you, like, you, I'll go you're, hard. You're competitive level. Like I was like a wreck hockey shit ass shit shit wreck hockey. Oh, I, I, player. I, I, like, I was like I was very I was very I just smile and and kick your ass. That's that's the level I was. I was like, oh yeah, that's what you got to say. No problem. Yeah, I'll just go out there. And then at the end of the game, we just like, hey, that's you, you still talking? You still got something to say? Not me, not me. I was never competitive. I hated sports. Really hated them okay. yeah I yeah them. Was, uh, one night, like when you'd go in class like gym class and they'd be like today we're playing basketball and like here's your team and here's your team i'd be the person just trying to look like i'm playing but like hiding behind people <laughs> yeah. i didn't i wasn't i wasn't my thing um i liked uh i liked a little bit of drama and the arts uh but i liked skipping school the most that was <laughs> more interesting how okay how did you do that did you fake your own notes or do you just like bug off um, and you're like, no, I'm not going. 
Well, in the beginning, I would just take off, but then they'd call my mom, right? Because this is in the 90s. And then... <laughs> Are you okay? I'm, oh, I'm dying. This is so funny because like, the way that you had to hack things back then. Well, and then eventually I started writing notes. But uh, see, my mom was a young mom, so she was in university a lot when mm -hmm. I was in school. Um, and a couple times she went on some trips. So when she was on trips, my mom had no idea that I wasn't in school. Um, but a lot of it wasn't just because I enjoyed skipping. I mean, sure, I had fun, but I had issues with kids in my school. So I just didn't want to go to school and deal with all the drama. Yeah, I mean, school can be a rough place. You know? it, it really is. It really is. But yeah, no, I never, I never got into sports. I did sing. And um, even with all the drama aside, when I got to high school, I managed to get on stage and sing with my best friend at the time. And uh, we sang at a club for a bunch of drunk adults for a fashion show. Mm, that's um, <laughs> I, did, I did see in the chat, I think it was Paul, he said, are you going to share your beautiful voice with us? So I don't know if you want to sing now or another time, but I hear <laughs> Maybe you another time. I, I just want to say, like, I hear you have a beautiful voice. And like, yeah, we'd have to make like a recording and send it in, and then you'd play it. Like, why? So, um, you're not a good on the spot singer. I can be. Well, I can, like, <laughs> listen, if I drink, I'll sing like fifty Whatever. songs. <laughs> I, I fully respect and understand that. Like, I sing just as well. I'm just learning to sing, but it's like to be asked to sing on the spot. Like, sometimes you want to, and sometimes you don't. Right. So I totally get that. But I'd love to hear a recording. Yeah, maybe, maybe someday I have a few. Mm -hmm. What do you have a favorite song that you sing? Oh, there's far too many. Um. I'm just going to say my favorite genre because there's just too many great songs from it. Um, is yeah. a lot of love ballads from the nineties. Oh, nice. R&B love ballads. Oh, just like the, the hit you in the heart, break your heart at the same time, leave you pleading for somebody you don't even know. <laughs> it's just um, uh, beautiful music. Well, you know what? I, I don't know who, who's bird box. Aussie, but I, I think that's a, like it's just it's so personal when you sing and like I I try uh -huh. to I try to sing and dance every day just because it makes me feel good like just in my kitchen you know yeah um, well I've got I've got a talented daughter who sings all the time and we hear her sing downstairs upstairs in the shower all over the house it's like a concert all day long yeah, yeah. the other <laughs> well, day we were outside and you heard her she was she was feeling it and uh, uh, when she's feeling it man it's it's quite a performance mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you i i sometimes it just i stop what i'm doing and i just listen because she doesn't like to give me the performances that i ask for <laughs> i request no, because, because all the time she's the, she's the boss of you wow. well she's the boss of her that's 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 how our children are or are we, we try to instill them is like hey man you're the boss of you so if you don't want to do it you don't do it right yeah because mm -hmm. just because somebody else wants you to jump doesn't mean you got to jump uh, i'm so with you on that and um I'll, I'll just like i don't know if what i could is there anything that you're practicing miss other than what you've mentioned no um i uh, the pandemic kind of really killed my mojo so mm -hmm. i'm not as creative as i used to be i used to write poetry I used to sometimes just sing off the top of my head and be like, oh, that would make a great song and like uh, write it down. Um, but I just haven't had, I haven't had the motivation to do that. I've just been so caught up taking care of everybody else, uh, getting out of the bad mood slumps that I was in. I'm in a much better place now, so I'm sure I'll get there again. Well, th thank you for sharing that. And definitely have had my very dark moments in the pandemic too. Like I've been. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I think we all collectively felt something. And but like I told my mom, because uh, depression runs in my family. I told my mom at the beginning of the pandemic, it was the first time that I actually didn't feel bad about having depression because in those first like few months, it really felt like the whole world got to experience what it's like in my head every day. Uh, honestly, thank you so much for sharing that. That's really brave. In you know, I actually, I didn't realize I had anxiety until the pandemic. I, 
I'm just like, I was like, why do I wake up with my heart pounding and worrying about 18 things? I'm just like, this is new for me. And I'm like, oh, I guess I have anxiety. (laughs) So, and that's like so many of us do, right? Like, but it's just like, I didn't, I was like, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. You know, now I'm like, well, maybe a little bit of anxiety. Thank you, plain power. That's really lovely. <laughs> but yeah, like it's, and it's, and it used to be hard to say, but now it's just like, oh, yeah. um, I don't fucking care. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier these days to talk about it. I mean, cause if you even yeah. think up to like in the nineties, uh, I probably was dealing with like depression and anxiety at that age, but we weren't taught about it. I didn't know the signs to look for. And I just carried on and kind of built mm-hmm. a shield, right? And that's how you get through life with a shield. It's not until like I got older and had kids that like you have those moments of silence and whatnot where everything starts hitting you and you're like, what's wrong with me, right? What, mm-hmm. what am I going through? Um, and to realize that, hey, it's probably something I've been dealing with for a while, but now that everybody's talking about it, it's easier to open up. It's so good. Like, um, like the young people that I have in my life, um, not I'm not speaking about my children, but like when they're when they're just like, yeah, I had like was really anxious today, and I had to leave class, and I had to go like wash my hands in cold water and put ice cubes on them because like that's that really helps me. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing that you can tell me that and that you know how to do that. Like I don't think probably when I was in high school, um, well if you want to go off books like we would just go out to the parking lot and get high <laughs> like no let's let's get high and get some donuts like i don't it's probably a better a healthier way <laughs> we don't think healthy when we're young <laughs> <laughs> i was like i li- i i worked uh, sorry I went to high school at Kitchener Collegiate Institute and we were down the street from a donut shack. I don't know what it's called now. And it was like and a and a and a an arcade. So we'd like go out at lunch. I really hope oh I'm my parents are listening. I know that they're listening. Sorry, Mom. Sorry. And, oh <laughs> but like it's like not every day, but sometimes we would go out and get high and then go get donuts and then go play pool. <laughs> And then we, I would get back to class on time and I'm like, maintain my 80% average and get into university. But I'm just like, that's what we did. That was Kitchener. Hey, you went to KCI. So your school was right across the street from Central Fresh Market. Yes. Oh my God. When I had Jasmine, I lived in the buildings right across from Central Fresh Market. Um, oh that was God. 2004. I worked there for a short period of time. I would honestly, I can't believe our KDAB connections. Like, I would go to Central Fresh at lunch and be like, starf down a bun or whatever, you know, like, go, mm-hmm. you know, on the recess. Oh, I, yeah, the owner, Mike Williamson, he's very nice. Well, I can't believe you worked at Central Fresh Market. Like, that was, it was a really good market. Like, it was. Yeah. yeah. And they, they really uh, they, they really helped me out when I worked there. I only worked there uh, two and a half years. Mm-hmm. So when Jazzy was six months, I went to work. Um, and then I worked until I moved away uh, from that area. So yeah, it was it was a pretty good job. The the men that worked there uh, kind of creepy to the young girls, but you know, it is how it is. You just ignore it and do your job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, there's more to be unpacked there, but um, uh, hmm. no, and, no, this is uh, the the owner, the owner, because he had a lot of money. He would kind of like flirt with some of the girls there, and there was rumors, but, but I was good. I'm always a good girl. Well, no, I I have no doubt, and uh, yeah, no, it's just amazing what people can get away with. Um, so you know the Kaufman factory, right? Was right near yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Like there was so much uh, industry, um, like the furniture factory. There was the, um, I think it was at Molson's. I'm not sure on Park Street, but like it was a very industrial uh, area. And then um, like a lot of them folded 
There was U Union Tire. Is that right near there? I, I don't remember a lot of the stores around there because um, I only lived in that building uh, for about a year. And then I moved up by um, out by Fairview Mall. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Which is honestly the best mall in the world. It was honestly my favorite. Um, other oh, than the center Toronto because that's always <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> I was like, it was like the hugest excitement of like back to school. I would take the bus to that to that that shop and be like, I'm gonna get some I don't know, some terrible eighties outfit to wear for back to school. And I was just like, I'm crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I lived right across the street from the mall. So that yeah. was cool for me because you're in there all the time. Yeah, no, it's a great mall. Like I don't know what's happening with it now, but um um, no, I do you remember the Kmart that was at uh, on King Street? No. Okay. Well, I worked in a, there was a Kmart there. Uh, I think it was King, it was King Street, and uh, there was, I worked at a chip truck in the Kmart oh. parking lot, and it was the best job I've ever had. Like I was, I worked for. Um, two people from the east coast who are a couple who are in grad school at university of waterloo and they like they they me they got a chip truck because and they were trying to replicate what uh, they were what they'd seen in the east coast for chip trucks and they treated me so well they paid me five dollars an hour when minimum wage was, was 350 mm -hmm. they gave me a key to the truck and i eat french fries every day and i would go home smelling like a french fry and my Great. parents Oh, like these, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I just made five bucks an hour, and uh -huh. I had to eat French fries and have really interesting political conversations. They were very, very um, politically involved, and I'm just like, this is the best freaking job ever. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I can go to Kmart on my break. <laughs> uh, I hear you laughing, Mo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it's funny. <laughs> Worked at Pizza Hut once and I always came home smelling like pizza yeah. trees. That was fun. It gets in everything. Oh, yeah. No, it's like something. Yeah. Oh, it was so funny. And like, and I would show up, like they gave me keys to the truck and I would show up and I'd be like scrubbing potatoes in a bucket and then blanch, like cutting them and blanching them. And I was just like, I'm the, I'm the manager of a chip truck and it came out of lot. And I'm 15 years old. I'm like, I have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> you did? As a 15 year old, you were on top of shit. I'll tell you that. I'm still in touch with uh, one of the owners of my mother. How many teenagers could say they were a manager? How many other 15 year olds are saying they were a manager? No, I, I should be in my business card. I'm, a, I'm like the assistant nighttime part time manager of a chip truck in a Kmart parking lot. So, <laughs> well, you don't have to put that part in. You could just be like, I'm the assistant part time assistant manager at Ed Fine Fries. <laughs> they, nobody needs to know it's in the Kmart parking lot. A business is a business. It doesn't matter if it's in a parking lot or in brick and mortar. It's still a business. It's got to run. I was like, honestly, it was it was so much fun. And when I graduated from high school, they like they took me out for dinner. They gave me a card. They gave me a gift. Like they were honestly the best employers like ever. People, man, oh my gosh! I know. Uh, these guys are awesome. They, they, they should oh. have like a bigger business enterprise. And like, I know. Do, do well, they've since, they've since parted ways, but they're like, you know, they're like, do you, okay, mom, I'm sorry, mom, but Pat and I smoke pot together. They're like, do you want to like come to our apartment and smoke pot and then we'll go out for dinner? I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Sure. <laughs> Fuck, that's, that's great. What, you're going to get me high and feed me? God damn it. I like this. This fat time. And you paid me? God damn it. Well, like, these are great people. They're so nice. Oh, okay, what have you got, Mo? Like, do you have like a, a story about anywhere you've worked? That's, um, um, that I worked you in Red Lobster. I like. I, I, I did culinary arts in uh, in high school for like no four way. years. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, Chef Michael Vardy was the teacher there. I think he teaches at Central Tech now. 
that's the last I, I looked into him and found him. Amazing, amazing individual. The guy uh, taught me so many skills that took me through life. Like being able to feed yourself with little to nothing as far as ingredients is concerned is like, it, it was amazing. So like, even when I do have stuff, anyways, like I ended up at Red Lobster and um, that just to say it started out good. Um, we were, we were doing good things and uh, a new manager came in and things just didn't work out. <laughs> I don't, I, I might've chased him around his car in the parking lot with a knife or I might not have. I don't know. I can't remember. It was such a long time ago. <laughs> that was the last, that was the last shift I had. Cause he, 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 was, he was trying to tell me. Red lobster career? <laughs> that was it. I, I never worked in a kitchen again. I never wanted to. Cause I'm like, nah, man, this is not for me. I like cooking. I don't like cooking for people who just complain about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am gonna pee my pants, and I, not to brag, but my my boyfriend in university, his name was Doug, and he had really amazing hair. Like he had hair down to here, like beautiful hair. He was a chef at Red Lobster as well as a university student. And I was like, oh, I have arrived. I met him in Grand, I met him in Grand Bend at like some beach bar, and I'm like, yeah, Doug, awesome. He didn't have a lot of words, but he had really good hair. And he was <laughs> a chef. <laughs> He's like, he was I'll see. out of the right boxes. <laughs> like, he met a dad when he was bald. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got Soch in the morning at 8.30. I'm like, okay, well, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, re respect to the Red Lobster chefs. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah no i was like i had a i had a pretty um low bar but his hair was awesome mo's hair is awesome <laughs> <laughs> miss did you like do do either of you want to um end Something. the show like i'd love to just hand it over to you and and uh whatever you want to say this is like thank you so much for being on here and not letting me feel lonely. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having anytime, us. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, eventually more people will be courageous like me and come and join. I'm a lot more fun when I'm tipsy. So next time I join, I'm going to have to have something to drink. Because I get really bubbly and talkative and laugh a lot. You know what? You're perfect just the way you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> No, it's been really great. And I love, I love our damn fam. Like you guys, all of you guys, uh, I can't really talk in the chat right now because I'm on video, but I just want to mm -hmm. let it know how much you guys all mean to me because it's been a rough few years and finding this group of people to be able to talk to, to relate to, who know me, who love my kids. We all share our families. I think it's really great. It's given me a sense of community <laughs> that I lost when I lost my two best friends and the two people I trusted the most. And so it's nice to be able to build that trust with people I've never even met in person. And it's pretty awesome. So that is awesome. And I'm I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, losses. No, it's not losses as in death. It's more like just past friendships yeah. that fizzled out. I figured <laughs> it, it's still it's still a loss. Yeah. And yeah. I'm really sorry. It's really it fucking hurts. Like I've <laughs> I've lost some friends through divorce and stuff, and it just like it, it rips your heart out. You're like, I'm mm -hmm. like, really? It does. One I knew since high school when we went to Central Tech, and the other one I met when I lived in Kitchener. And our daughters are six days apart, uh, mm -hmm. so that that one hurt the most because she would never. I never pictured somebody like that betraying me, um, and she did. <laughs> the pandemic got to her and turned her uh, far right. Well, I'm sorry for that. And, you know, like, uh, uh, this is something a, a very wise person, a, a very wise woman told me when I separated and, uh, you know, I'd lost some friendships. And she said, you'll never believe, you'll, you'll always be surprised at who steps forward and who steps back. Yeah. Right? I have learned that, yeah. And it was just like, 
anyone who steps forward thank you so much anyone who steps back well i guess you're dealing with your own stuff but i'm like oh i'm sorry my divorce is so hard on you <laughs> but anyway i i'm just saying i i really uh, i do i i lost a whole group of friends so uh -huh. uh, i really i appreciate that you said that you shared that and um it fucking sucks <laughs> yeah it does. Uh, I've gotten better. It's been a long time now. So um, at least it feels like forever now. And I've surrounded myself with so many people who actually genuinely care about me. So yep. uh, a new family, funny. right? Huh. Yeah. Well, will we do this again? Will you come on again? You and yep. Ro? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for being part of the, uh, um, the beta and uh, yeah. It's just I, my heart is so full and I'm just going to like sleep well tonight thinking about all this nice conversation. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to do a Tuesday or a Thursday around six o'clock. Okay. Uh, the less I talk, the better. Okay. Now at six o'clock, I can't guarantee I'll be able to join because he's oh, here. Okay. He'll that's be still fine. awake unless you don't mind him coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Either of you anytime, like there's no invitation necessary. All right. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh -huh. Mateo absolutely loves being included in everything. <laughs> oh, wow. He sounds like a lovely person, honestly. Yeah. He just thinks the uh, you guys are all like family. So he's like, oh, he sees you on TV. Aww. He's like, tell them I say hi. <laughs> well, give him a little virtual hug from me. And uh, yeah, thank you. This you, you really made my night because I didn't want to do this by myself. And you stepped in, both of you. So thank you. You're welcome. Sorry it was a little late. You rock. You <laughs> rocked it, Bridget. It was uh -huh. awesome. And Cassie's going to join another time. She was busy tonight, and Saucy was busy too. So we'll 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 do it again. Like this I is Alicia speaking. <laughs> 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 you better get on this next time. <laughs> oh in, in Toronto, Dan, I'd love to get you on and. Uh, I've met a few other people um, who I think would really have a great uh, uh, conversation to add to the mix. And Ellen, yes, I do. I, I'm on social media and I'm, I'm not on Twitter. Um, Paul's setting me up on YouTube for this account, but uh, on uh, on Instagram, I'm Brigitte Milonsky is my private account, but I'm just, you know, happy to connect. And then I have a public account that's called be Malin model or something. I was gonna try to get into modeling as a side hustle. And you can then do it. I, oh girl, no. I was just like, it's so much friggin' work. And I was just like, <laughs> like, mm, I no, I think no, thank you. Like, I don't know. Be, I could see that. I could see the calendar and met him with a fox. And too like kind, too kind. <laughs> and just like you have to get a lookbook. You have to book appointments. You have to go to an agency. You have to pay them. Oh, um, and I was just like, uh, I don't, this, and I don't, super feminist. Like, I was just like, I know there's a lot of body positive stuff going on out there, but I'm just like, ah, it's, I don't have friggin' time. I have to, like, yeah. take care of my garden. <laughs> yeah. And it's still hard. Like, it's body positivity, but all the negativity online makes it. You know, it, it takes you like 10 steps back because you see people criticizing people that look like you and you're like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like, we love everybody business. <laughs> and like, honestly, I'm not trying to be like a delicate flower, but I'm like, you know, I had a challenging situation on the chat another night and uh, I was just like, I don't think I'm cut out for this. Like, this is hard. Like, I don't want to be public. I don't want to be criticized i don't want anyone to know where i live like you know i've had someone break into my home you wow. know like my address can be found online uh yeah. very very easily and uh i was just like i don't fucking want this now yeah. i'm like yeah you know what fuck it i'm gonna do it <laughs> so and i'm not trying to say like oh look at me i'm brave but i'm just like you know what you are I'm brave it is brave it's a brave thing to come online well, you're brave too. You're brave too. Look at you. You didn't. You're. You said you were shy, and like, look at you. You're on camera, and you're. Totally I am. Shy. I figure at this point, if anybody's watching the restream and like watching it to like stalk me or whatever, it's too late already. They already see me. 
Yeah, I'm like <laughs> if you're stalking. Watch out. <laughs> I, I have I have a few people out there that don't like me very much. I'm a little lippy online. Well, that might be that might be your new nickname, Lippy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry who said it. Thank you, Plain Power. Um, uh, my so my public is a uh, uh, Bridget Mallon model, something like that. Uh, and my private is Brigida Malonsky, which is like I. And so someone was like, oh, you're Ukrainian. And I'm like, no, that's my fake race name. When I sign up for races that I know I'm going to bomb at, I don't <laughs> want it on my record. <laughs> like, I, I, I put that on the bib and people are like, that's, you're not supposed to do that. And I'm like, I know, but oh my gosh, <laughs> you're now, you're now lippy, miss. No, no. Toronto just, Toronto no. just, Toronto no. Dan just tagged you lippy. <laughs> Honestly, well, that's the best thing that uh -huh. oh, ratty or spicy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh you you've now got another nickname, so I think uh this is your show now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well will we all give each other like a little like thank you so much and uh maybe we'll see you on the chat. Yes. Thank you for having me on here and thank you everybody in the chat. My new nickname is now Lippy. <laughs> I'm going to change it and confuse the hell out of Douglas on Monday or Tuesday. No, Monday. I'll do it on Monday, I hope. <laughs> Douglas is going to be like, what the fuck? I'm like, well, <laughs> catch up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been there. <laughs> Okay, well, much love to you all. Thank you. Much love to all of you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye. I'm not sure how to turn it off. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That was so fun.